Today we'll learn, we'll begin learning a ma'amar, a Hasidic explanation of Rosh Hashanah, written by the, spoken by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1986, Tavshin Mem Vav, and explains the idea of the shofar. What is really going on when we build the shofar on Rosh Hashanah? and especially how it symbolizes and it will bring to a bigger shofar which will change the whole world. Just a short introduction. We have no idea how important Judaism is and that's because we don't realize how important God is. We take life for granted and we don't see the miracles all around us. For instance, the miracle of just our, our being, the fact that we exist the miracle of life that's inside of all this existence of consciousness, of purpose, and the big blessing that there is available to all of us in the Torah. But we don't see these things, I feel. And that's the purpose of Hasidut, specifically in Torah in general, is to make the world a little bit more transparent so that we can see the true meaning behind it. Something like a diamond salesman, a person that doesn't know anything about diamonds, looks at a diamond and sees a piece of glass, but a person who is aware of what a diamond is, as he can see the true value. So it's true of music and art. Appreciation, to see through the exterior and to see a deeper meaning. So let's look and try to understand a little bit deeper meaning of what is Rosh Hashanah and what is the blowing of the shofar. First of all, uh, the, uh, every holiday in Judaism celebrates some sort of an occurrence in history. Passover celebrates when we got out of Egypt. Shavuot, when we received the Torah. Uh, Yom Kippur was the day that the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, went into the Holy of Holies and got forgiveness for everybody. What does Rosh Hashanah signify? What does it commemorate? Well, on this day, exactly 5,700 and 76, this year we 76 years ago, the world, man was created. The world was finished, the sixth day of creation. And that's what blowing the shofar signifies, that we're being created brand new all the time. Every day is like a birthday for the whole entire universe. But we remember that on Rosh Hashanah, when God began creating the world. Because according to Judaism, God creates the world brand new every second. So let's get into the mimer. Here we go. Ready? We're starting off with a prophecy of Isaiah. And it will be on that day, you talk up a shofar godel, that a big shofar will be blown. It's talking about the redemption, the future redemption. The Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, will come and, first of all, bring everybody to awareness, change everybody's priorities in life, and then after that there's going to be a gathering of all the Jews in the world and gathering of all the meaning and blessing in the world that each person will feel. So on that day there will be blown a big shofar. It doesn't say who's blowing it. <coughs> Gadol, a big shofar. Ubo ha'ovdim, there will come the lost people. Be'eretz Ashur, the Jews that are lost in the land of Ashur. Where is this place? We'll see. Vanidachim be'eretz Mitzrayim and the Cast away people in the land of Mitzrayim, Egypt. Ashur, by the way, means also means richness, and Mitzrayim means poorness. And all of the the world, essentially, but especially the Jews, will bow down to God, Bahara Kodesh, in the holy mountain. Where is this holy mountain in Yerushalayim? Sentence in Isaiah prophecy. In the teachings of our rabbis, the previous rabbis, Ari Lubavitch Rebbe is the seventh in a chain of great uh, rabbis, great tzaddikim. In fact, it has been said that each of the rabbis of Chabad, starting from the first Rebbe who wrote the book to Tanya, was actually the Messiah of his generation. <clears throat> it's written said that all the Rebbe's wrote Maimorian, they all wrote discourses on this sentence about the big shofar. 
and also Lakuti Torah. Lakuti Torah is the book of that was written by the first Rebbe, Kavod Kedushas Ad Mor Hazaken, by the Alta Rebbe, the old Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, Rabbi Shneur Zalman, about 250 years ago. But Cain also, Bedrushi, Kavod Kedushas Ad Mor Emsai, the second Rebbe of Chabad, called the middle Rebbe, Kavod Kedushas Ad Mor Tzedach Tzedach, the third Rebbe of Chabad. Kavod Kedushas, his honor, his holiness, Ad Mor is Adonino, our Master, Moreno, our teacher, Verabeno, and our rabbi. The Maharash, Maharash stands for the Rebbe Shmuel, fourth Rebbe of Chabad. Kavar Gushad Mor Marshab, the Rebbe Rashab, and Morichami, and the previous Rebbe, who was the father in law of the last Rebbe, Nasi Dorenu, who is the leader of our generation. Muva Bediuka Zohar, and they bring down what it says in the Zohar. <laughs> now, what is the Zohar? The Zohar is not a book that you read in order to know what to do in Judaism. For that, there is what's called the Kitzah Shulchan Orach. You can learn what the uh, customs and the laws are of what to do with your body and what to do with your mouth, how to speak, even how to think properly, but how to feel and how to have love of God and how to really appreciate God. It's, this is only found in the book, the Zohar, and similar books, which are called Kabbalah. Sifro Shel Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the book which is written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who was buried here in the Holy Land of Israel in the city of Miron. It says, Chabura Dilach, it says over there that Elijah the prophet spoke to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and said, with this book the Jewish people will go out of exile. The Jewish people will realize what is a Jew, and when they realize what's what they're supposed to do, then the whole world will start to become a better place. There won't be murder, there won't be lies, there won't be sickness, there won't be wars. Wars. It all depends on the Jews. But it depends on the Jews getting themselves together in their soul, in the inside. So it says in the Zohar about this incredible commandment, which is blowing of the shofar, and what the Mashiach is going to cause, the blowing of the big shofar that's going to gather all the Jews and change the whole entire world around, he explains, What is this idea of shofar gadol davka? Why does it have to be a shofar, big shofar gadol? What does it mean that a big shofar will be blown? What difference does it make if it's big or if it's small? And it seems to be that who is blowing this big shofar? That God is blowing it. So if God is sounding this big shofar, what difference does it make if it's a big one or a small one? We're gonna, we will understand this. Ubafrat and especially, Shafilu that even, Benogea, regarding Le Shofar to the Shofar, the ram's horn, Shalomayla, from above, from God. It's written before, elsewhere, that God will blow a big, will blow a Shofar to gather the Jews. It says, Adoni Havaya, it says Hashem, Hashem of Havaya, Beshofer Yitaka, he will blow a shofar. It doesn't say a big shofar. Beshofer Stam, a regular shofar. Lama Khan, why here when it's talking about the future redemption, Neamar, does it say Beshofer Godol? Why does it say over here with a big shofar? Now it might be a little bit strange to you the idea that God can sound a shofar. <clears throat> but the fact is, is that it says when we make a, when we put on a, a, a tefillin or we do any commandment, we say a blessing. Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvotav that God commanded us with His commandments, <clears throat> and it's learned even in midrash, even not in the secrets of the Torah, that God also does the commandments. Now we know that God has not got a shape, and God is not a person, and God is not an angel, and God is not a spirit. He creates all the angels and all the spirits. <clears throat> but on the other hand, we cannot limit God by saying that He must be unlimited. And that's the idea that Kabbalah discusses that God has a form. Man is created in the image of God, it says in the Bible. That's what's called the ten spherot, the ten spheres of godliness, to explain God's oneness. But nevertheless, God creates the world, and He wants the Jews to improve the world. And that's what happens when we do a commandment. When we do a commandment, we arouse something in God's essence, because that's what God decided. And that's what it means that God also blows the shofar. 
So in other words, we get a reaction from God. Not just from the infinite part of God, from the aspect of God that's even above being infinite, that can even make himself finite in this world, and that he cares about the world. But let's continue. Why here does it have to say that God blew, that God will be, blow a big shofar? It doesn't even say God will blow it. It just says a shof, big shofar will be blown. Why not just a regular shofar? Vulamakan, why here, Neymar, does it say, Beshofar Gadol, why does it here say a big shofar? Kam Surah Lahavim, we also have to understand. Mashikatu, that which is written. Yitaka, it will be blown, stam, without explanation. Below Neymar, it does not say, Mi hu, atokea, who will blow the shofar? The Gabi shofar, stam, that in regard to the regular shofar that we just wrote about, we heard this prophecy before. Where is that prophecy found? It is found in Zechariah, chapter 60, sentence 10. It says, <clears throat> It doesn't say, Why does it say? It says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Kasev Hashem a shofar, but Al Derech says similarly in Tikkun Shofar that the Jewish people blow. It says Ashrei Ha'am Yodea Teruma. It says Happy are the people who know and understand the shofar blast. Through is a shofar blast. Masha Enkin, which is not the case in Shofar Gadol, in this shofar that we're talking about that is going to be blown in the days of the Messiah. Kativ is written, Yitaka, it will be blown, but knows Niskar, and it doesn't say who's going to do it. Vegam also, we have to understand, Masha Medayak, what it says, Bayomahu, only on that day will the shofar be blown. Umashma Uta Inyan, and it seems to imply to call Inyanim Elu that all of these are attached one to the other. Namely, what? That on this day, on this day, will be blown, we don't know, a shofar, Godel, the big shofar. Why are all these attached? Why only on, th on this day it will have to be a big shofar and we don't even know who's blowing it? Hainu, the shofar, Godel, namely that this big shofar that will be blown in the days of the future redemption, who, Hamshacha, Draws down me bechinet from the level of steam of the kolstinim, the secret of all secrets. Shelomayel, which is above me bechinet gilui, which is above any sort of revelation. Belochin, <coughs> therefore, lo neamar does not say bo in it me atokea who blows the shofar. The big shofar, the shofar that we blow now does elicit a reaction from Hashem, but it's not going to be anything like what's going to be in the future. In the future, it's going to be a, from the essence, the essence, essence of God. Luchin, therefore, it says, by Yom Ahu, it says, in that day, Lashen it doesn't say today, or in this day. It says, in that day. Concealed. It hasn't come yet. Tzorech, Lahavim, we have to understand. Ma'awinyan, what does it mean, shofar Godel? What does it mean, a big shofar v'shaychud? And what is the connection, Shalom, the Bechinet Helem, to this level of concealment. Why only a big shofar? And what does it mean by God? There's no such thing as big or small. God creates everything. What does it mean a big shofar? And only this big shofar, which will be sounded in the future, will gather all the Jews together because it touches on such a deep level of godliness. What does all this have one connection to another? How does godliness affect people that suddenly they become religious and they all want to go to Jerusalem, what does it mean? We also have to understand We also understand that what it says Yitaka the shofar gadol that it will be blown. A big shofar uboa ovdin will come the lost people for Eretz Ashur from the land of Ashur and the pushed away people from the land of Mitzrayim. Muchak, this seems to indicate that in order, she kibbutz galius. In order that all the Jews will come from everywhere, there has to be a show for Godel, and we'll talk about this in the next section.